the concept that the planet is very fragile really came out of Rachel Carson's book. Silent Spring sounded the alarm that we were destroying the life support system of the planet. The book was a sensation. It was printed in over 30 languages. Rachel Carson has to get the main credit for the modern environmental movement because she was the first one to point out one of the really serious environmental problems. That was the overuse of pesticides. It was the right moment, the right book, and the right personality. Although the pesticide industry tried to demonize her, Rachel Carson didn't demonize easily. Unless we do bring these chemicals under better control, we are certainly headed for disaster. The balance of nature is built of a series of interrelationships between living things and between living things and their environment. You can't just step in with some brute force and change one thing without changing a good many others. Now, this doesn't mean, of course, that we must never interfere, that we must not attempt to tilt that balance of nature in our favor. But when we do make this attempt, we must know what we're doing. We must know the consequences. There was an ugly backlash after the book came out. The chemical industries were calling her a hysterical woman that didn't know what she was talking about. The major claims in Miss Rachel Carson's book, Silent Spring, are gross distortions of the actual facts completely unsupported by scientific experimental evidence and general practical experience in the field. Ms. Carson maintains that the balance of nature is a major force in the survival of man, whereas the modern chemist, the modern biologist, the modern scientist believes that man is steadily controlling nature. Something that we all thought of prior to her as better living through chemistry in a sense. You're, you're pouring this stuff on your crops and you're producing more crops. And it really was not something that you thought, my goodness, people are intentionally poisoning the environment. And that those poisons might not be as selective as they're telling us. Rachel Carson was incredibly scrupulous in the creation of Silent Spring. She understood that we are organisms as much as the birds whose songs were being silenced. She wrote not only a tremendously informative book, but uh, an incredibly moving book. And she did it while she was suffering from cancer. There was a controversy that raged really until her death. It was still going on. And that was kind of sad because uh, she was a shy person. She was not a crusader. She was a scientist. There appears to be growing concern among scientists as to the possibility of dangerous long-range side effects from the widespread use of DDT and other pesticides. President Kennedy's science advisory group reported that Rachel Carson's method of research was sound and her findings and conclusions were generally correct. President Kennedy backed uh, Rachel uh, Carson. Uh, I think particularly, of course, uh, since Ms. Carson's book, but... Uh, and that put the chemical industry on the defensive. I truly believe that we in this generation must come to terms with nature. And I think we're challenged, as mankind has never been challenged before, to prove our maturity and our mastery, not of nature, but of ourselves.
really profound difficulty that we confront, particularly in the West, is the degree to which people came to equate the accumulation of material goods with success and happiness. It hasn't always been like that. The things we have to do to accumulate more goods tends to deteriorate the quality of the social system. So, as we get less and less satisfaction from the social side of our lives, we actually tend to put more and more emphasis on the accumulation of material goods. When I was 19, I, I took off and hitchhiked around the world for a few years, and I was just profoundly depressed by the the many ways that America was falling short of the American dream that I'd been taught in my younger years. In January of 1965, I find myself in Namibia, in the middle of a desert, I was hungry, I was tired, had been alone for a couple of years, and had, in essence, sort of a, a vision. The things that came together in my mind at that point were the human problems we were facing and the principles of ecology that guided literally everything on Earth. Ecology is in some large measure the study of how populations obtain and use energy efficiently, uh, energy from the sun through their food supplies. And because humans had divorced themselves in some large measure from the inflow of solar energy by tapping into fossil energy resources, we'd been able to seemingly for a period of time, for a century or so, violate some of these basic principles of ecology. And that by and large, they led us into some really unfortunate consequences. The idea here is, what do you really do to try to bring the carbon cycle back into balance? It occurred to me that we need to begin to apply the principles of ecology to the way we build our cities, to the way that we manage our agricultural system, to the way that we make industrial processes. I was literally awake all night, excited with this thing, and got up the next morning knowing what I was going to do. I was going to come back to the United States, I was going to become engaged in political activity, and I was going to be trying to see if I could somehow insert this insight into the body politic. Thank you.